Hey guys and welcome back, my name is James and today we're going to be reviewing the Cal Friedrich Valence briefcase. Now I've never done reviews before but they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to have one of their briefcases in exchange for a review and well I have to say I, I just love briefcases, I love bags in general as you know if you've been following this channel so I thought well I don't know this brand but you know what why not have a look see what they offer. And surely enough, a few weeks later, uh, if not a few days later, I receive this in the mail. It is indeed their Valence briefcase. And from the, from the get-go, I was very, very impressed with this. Now, I love to make bags, I love to make my own things, and if you're watching me, that's probably why you're following my channel. So today, I'm gonna give you a review of this, but also try and show you how they built it, and maybe if there are any techniques or lessons that we can learn from it. First of all, let's look at the design. It's a very, very sleek, small, minimalist bag, which is great for day-to-day -day use. I did use it myself over the course of these last few weeks uh, for some very important meetings, and indeed it was used just like that for a small tablet, a small computer. Uh, I had books, I had my keys, my phone, my wallet, you know, just day-to-day -day stuff in this, and it was a great little carry, carry on or carry around for me, and I really enjoyed it. Looking more closely, you do see it is indeed some really nice vegetable tanned vachetta or vachetta leather, which is cow leather. It comes from Italy and you definitely can see the quality straight away of this leather. One thing I absolutely love is seeing the marks in the leather from the cow. Now, these will not deter from the quality of the bag. It's just something that's built into the leather, sort of. Uh, just shows that it is indeed top grain leather and it, it just looks gorgeous. And this is one of the things that will age even better with time. This kind of leather, if you take care of it, will take care of you. Um, it may sound cheesy, but that is actually quite true in my, uh, the way I see it. Uh, if you take care of this leather, this leather will last you a lifetime. And I'm not kidding about that, a lifetime. You may need to touch it up from time to time, but it will last, it will keep going on and on and on. Secondly, you will note that it is machine stitched. Now, you might prefer, like I, uh, would prefer a hand stitch, but not necessarily on every single item. The reason for that is very simple. Hand stitching takes a lot of time. Yes, it looks great. Yes, it's very sturdy, durable, but it will add a huge amount to the price tag. Now, I don't like spending thousands and thousands of euros on bags because I just don't think it's worth it most of the time. Um, which is why in this case they went for a machine stitch. We'll touch a bit more about the pricing later, but that was just a small thing to note while we're looking at the overall design. You'll see that they have got their logo here. It is a very simple, sleek and stylish logo, which I really love. I hate brands, and I won't name any, but you'll recognize them, where their logo is stamped all over the place. I just don't see the point. If you're going to buy a high-end bag, it is for the bag, not for the brand that is attached to it. You don't need a big logo, and that's what they've gone for. Really like that, very stylish, especially because it's a small logo that you find, uh, which is referenced in a few different areas, such as the straps here, or the, the handles, as well as the zip tie or zip pull here, as again, uses the same shape. Talking of the handles, uh, these are very comfortable. Uh, they are what I think is maybe 1.2 to 1.4 millimeter leather, uh, doubled up, so two, two layers of here uh, stuck together. And overall, it's, it's a good size, good compromise between uh, the solidity and suppleness of this leather. Talking of sizing, I did not mention it, but this leather is 1.8 to 2 millimeters thick, which is relatively substantial, um, and it does give you a very nice solidity and rigidity straight from the box, and I really enjoy it. Now, bear in mind that you will find it becomes more supple with time, but overall, because of the thickness of the leather and because they have used some reinforcing materials on the inside, uh, you will find that it lasts or at least this rigidity will last a very long time. And anyway, it will protect what's inside, that's for sure. If you have a look at the sides or the gussets of the bag, you'll see that they went for a very simple, very traditional three piece uh, side or gusset here, which are all stitched in the bottom corners basically with a very nice, neat looking method of construction. I will note that they have used some edge dye or edge coating here uh, on the bottom and instead of the burnishing, the gorgeous burnishing that you see all around the bag, by the way, which I did not talk about, but it's there and it's, 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 it's sleek, it's nice. Um, so they did use an edge coat at the bottom here on the corners, which will do two things. First of all, 
it will protect the corners against any wear and tear over the years and uh, from what I can tell these will not be moving anytime soon. Secondly, it also helps to basically disguise the corners, making sure that you can't see them because using the same color, they won't be as obvious as if you were burnishing them. So there are good reasons why you might want to use edge coat here and uh, definitely I do approve of their choices. Now I did mention burnishing, it is all around the bag. It is very, very well done. And I have nothing more to say on that because, well, if it's well done, it's, it's well done, I suppose. Uh, the last little thing to note about the front of the bag or the outside it's two things actually but one of the last things is going to be this little pocket here now it's actually surprisingly useful i wasn't sure about it when i first saw it but it's actually very very useful now you could use it for storing keys your phone your wallet if you feel like it but i prefer to keep those things on the inside because they're a bit more precious but they are use this this is useful if you've got small documents that you need to be able to access fast like plane tickets like train tickets or anything that you need to access fast um, you may actually want to be using this for your phone, but as I mentioned, I'd prefer putting it in the, in, in the inside. But that being said, it's a nice little addition. It is very well protected. You will notice here that the edges are not burnished, but instead they have a small piece of leather wrapped around the edge, and this will protect it from any wear and tear uh, from sliding things in and out, much more than a burnishing will, although you will have to keep uh, an eye on this just to make sure you're not basically wearing it out too fast. Now the final thing I want to talk about on the outside of the bag before looking inside is the zip. They mention on the website that each zip is hand buffed or hand polished. Um, I don't know about that, but it does feel really nice and sturdy. Now you'll know that, uh, you'll, you might know, but uh, you'll find out soon enough if you buy this bag, that a leather zip does feel a bit stiff, is pushing it too harshly. Uh, just a bit tough at first, but uh, bear in mind that these zips uh, made out of metal get really, really smooth with time and feel really great very fast with use. Um, they will also last a huge amount of time, so I'm not worried about that. Final note on the zip is this little uh, piece of leather here. I love the way that the zip is encased in this piece, a piece that will then fold down and uh, be basically stuck to the bag with this little Chicago screw. I really like this little design element. I think it's a very clever little element in, in ways of finishing the zip, which can sometimes be a bit awkward if you've ever used zips on your own creations. And uh, I think it's very clever and I really enjoy it. It gives you something you can hold on to. It looks fun. And overall, because this bag is so simple, this adds a nice little touch uh, to the design, which is really, really appreciated. Looking on the inside of the bag, you have a nice, nice sturdy lining now the lining comes in different colors this one is red but you can get it in gray and i didn't mention it but the bag itself comes in different colors as well this is the cognac you get a chocolate and i believe a black version for those who are more purists and i could imagine a black with the red lining would look amazing or if you want something more traditional you could go for the uh, chocolate with a gray lining something very sleek and elegant um, but in this case, it's red and it does look fabulous. Uh, it makes me think of the Louboutin red shoe soles, which uh, always pop and you do, you do remember those when you see them. Anyhow, the lining on the inside is what they call a technical nylon canvas. It's quite a thick canvas and it feels really sturdy and I doubt that it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. It comes with two pockets on the inside on the front part of the bag, which will be very useful for everyday items. I could certainly imagine using it for keys, wallets, uh, cards, you know, small items you might need on, every day, uh, on an everyday basis. Also, we have to note that the bottom is slightly padded, so anything you put down here will be protected from the ground when using this bag. Opposite this, you'll see that they have a nice piece of vegetable tanned leather, which looks like the same kind of leather used on the rest of the bag, by the way, uh, on the inside, which will remind you of the brand and different information like provenance, uh, things like that. And it's a nice little addition having this on the inside. As I mentioned, I don't like having the brands portrayed all over the bag, and I really find that this adds a nice touch. If there is only one point that I would say that could be improved upon this bag is that while you're adding this little piece of leather instead of riveting it in, which does look very sleek and elegant, why not sew it in order to use this as an extra pocket? That would be my only little criticism, if indeed it can be called a criticism versus an improvement suggestion, your choice. But hey, I would have liked to see this become a pocket instead of just a, a small écusson, as the French would say, stamped on the on the inside of the bag. But it's a nice addition 
It looks good, it does remind you of where this bag comes from and it is very stylishly done. The final element is going to be the computer compartment here. Now, bear in mind it is padded from the rest of the bag, so if you've got big bulky things in the bag, uh, this will be protected against it. Not on the back though, but uh, you know, you've got some thick leather here on the back, it's not something that's going to be bashed around too much. It does fit a very comfortable A4 notepad in here, as well as most computers, so that will give you an idea if your computer fits or not in here. Again, this separation is a classic, classic thing to see on the inside of bags. And yeah, overall it's got basically everything I might need for a daily commute bag. Finally, we're going to talk about the pricing. Today, this bag is just over 300 euros. Now, some of you might think that, whoa, that's a lot of money to spend on a bag. And some of you might think, well, that's actually not too bad considering all the, the, the specs of this bag. You may be used to buying bags very cheap, um, but if you're going to be buying a higher-end bag, or at least a good leather briefcase, this is, to be honest, a very fair price to pay. This bag, I mentioned previously, is something that is going to last you decades, if not a lifetime if you take care of it. And for that price, you are getting an exceptionally premium quality product. Bear in mind that most of these bags, or bags similar to this, will be at least double, if not triple, in price if you go to a regular retail store. And this brings me on to the second point. For those of you who might be thinking, wow, that's actually quite a good bargain for a bag this quality. There must be something weird about it. Well, no. Two points here. First of all, it is machine stitch, which means you are winning a lot or gaining or losing a lot of the price tag, I'd have to say, uh, with just by machine stitching it versus hand stitching. And secondly, Carl Friedrich have decided to go only via their own website. So there is no middleman, there is no other company adding in a 30% or 40% commission. You don't have to add in any types of hidden fees here. Uh, by going straight onto their website, you are getting the best deal possible. This is something we're seeing a lot happen with new startups, which prefer to sell direct to customer instead of going via a third party. And this will help reduce once more the pricing on this. That's it guys, I think we've talked about basically everything there is to say about this bag. Again, if you're interested, the link will be in the description below. There is a 15% coupon for you to use in the next 30 days after this video has been published. So if you're thinking about picking this bag up or any other Carl Friedrich item, feel free to go and check that out in the description below. I know this is not the usual type of content that I have on my channel and I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Uh, this is a new experiment for me, I've never done reviews on this channel before and I'd love to know what you thought about this video and what you think of this bag. Is this something that you'd be interested in? And yeah, I hope to see a lot of you guys in the comments below. In the meantime, thanks again for watching, thanks Carl Friedrich for sending me this and I'll see you very soon for some more Leathercraft.